So guys, it's finally official. Netflix Witcher and the interconnected universe of shows they've been trying to get off the ground the past few years, well, it's all dead, to say the least. There have been no less than four major Netflix Witcher stories that have broke over the past several days, all of which we're gonna cover today, with each one being slightly funnier than the last, but the only part you've maybe heard anyone talk about, the other stories kinda went under the radar, but this is the one that kicked everything off, Last week, Netflix made the announcement that the final two seasons of the main show would no longer be happening. That the seven-season plan the writers never stopped talking about is now getting thrown out, and what they've written is being cut down and filmed all at once, apparently, to be released as seasons four and five. Believe it or not, though, that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's arguably the smallest bit of news. But just for a little perspective as to how much of a mess that by itself already is, without the other news even factored in, the Netflix show is currently two full seasons into the main story from the books. Season 1 covered some of the standalone short stories, plus a bunch of Siri and Yennefer fanfiction, but seasons 2 and 3 were supposed to have been adapting the main saga, the core books that all tell one amazing, unbroken story. In those two seasons though, again 2 and 3, they've only managed to get through one book. Just one, because they skipped one of the novels almost entirely. Season 2 was fully invented for the show, at least after the first episode. I'm sure this won't surprise you, but Eskel being a weird perv who turns into fucking Groot and gets cut down by Geralt, that's a Netflix thing. As was Vesemir having severe brain damage and wanting to inject Ciri with Witcher mutations, and Yennefer losing her powers and deciding to sacrifice Ciri to a demon, and the monolith plotline, and… well anyway, the point is, after a full season of whatever it was they were doing there, season 3 did finally manage to get through one book, sort of. I mean, it did it poorly, but the bar is so low for this show, I'll give it credit anyway. That said, even if we give the writers the pass of having skipped over one novel entirely, plus huge sections of two of the others, which they did, and even if we completely ignore the eighth book, because it's not vital to telling this story and it's way too late to include most of it anyway, even if we give the show a pass for all of those things, they still have to somehow cover the three longest and by far the most complicated books in just two seasons now. And because the writers clearly thought their ideas were so much better than what was already written, they're also going to have to wrap up approximately 42 storylines that the show invented. Like they made Fringilla a main character for no reason, the same is true of Francesca who, my god they butchered that character even though the actress is great, but that's not even to mention the 35 other characters that have no business still being in the story yet are for reasons beyond my comprehension. And I'm just telling you guys, not that you didn't know this already, but we are witnessing history in the making here. When we're all old and gray in 2075 on our fourth replay of The Witcher 7 Geralt Returns Again Part 3, Netflix Witcher will still be the premier example to bring up when it comes to how not to run a show. Because for all of the other book and game adaptations that have definitely been less than stellar lately, this is the one that had everything going for it from the start. A lead actor who loved the role, a huge budget, all the goodwill you could ever ask for leading up to season one, and of everything, which there's a lot more to say, What's most embarrassing is that the writers had a series of books that were damn near written for television. This isn't Dune or even Lord of the Rings where you'd need someone insanely creative and talented to bring it to the screen. No, the first several Witcher books, especially 1, 2, and 4, are structured just like a TV show. And what I find extremely funny is that where Henry Cavill chose to bow out at the end of season 3, that is the single most inconvenient time in any story I can think of to have to change lead actors. because. The season ends where Geralt, Yennefer, and Ciri get split up, and for the rest of the story, the entire thing, that's the conflict, that's the reason you care, you want to see them survive and reunite because their relationships with each other are so special in the books, yet in the show what we currently have is a Yennefer who just one season ago was gonna have Ciri killed, again, a decision the showrunners made of their own accord instead of the way their relationship should have blossomed throughout that entire season. And what we also have is a brand new Geralt who we've never seen on screen with either of the other characters, yet they're gonna want people to care about them reuniting. Listen, I don't consider myself a cynical person, almost all of the content on this channel is positive, but I make an exception for this show because it's taken something I love and am truly passionate about and has turned it into a complete joke. And speaking of complete jokes, let's move right on to the next story from a few days ago because we're just getting started here. You might have heard that around a year ago, although you probably didn't hear because no one on the planet was excited for this, but it was announced that Netflix had greenlit another Witcher spinoff, which, I mean, Netflix has greenlit another Witcher spinoff sounds more like a threat than a headline, Blood Origin was their lowest rated show of all time, but for some reason someone thought it would be a good idea to give the go ahead to an even worse idea than Blood Origin. 
a full show about the rats who do appear in season three very briefly. And if you don't know about the rats, no spoilers, but they are by far the most insufferable characters in all of the books. They're a group of irritating criminals who take Siri in and do horrible things to her, and throughout the three books they appear in, they have exactly one good moment, and it's not something they do, it's something that's done to them. They exist in the books to serve a narrative purpose, which, hey, they definitely accomplish, but giving them a full spin-off seems like it must have been a dare. Like someone in the Netflix Witcher writing room said, all right, let's come up with the worst idea possible and see if we can get it greenlit. And for once they nailed the assignment because ideas don't get worse than a full show about the rats. That's not even to mention that, and I don't mean this in any personal way, but who they handed this Rats show to, the showrunner for this spinoff, was someone that had never written for a show before The Witcher. Never. No other credits. And, I mean, that's definitely a surefire recipe for success right there. Anyway, last April, filming kicked off for this show in South Africa. It was scheduled to be a six-month shoot, yet, kind of ominously, filming unceremoniously ended after under two months, leading to a lot of questions as to what exactly happened. Well, it's since come out that filming ended four entire months before it was supposed to because Netflix saw what they had already filmed and decided to pull the plug. Reportedly, they had only filmed one or maybe two of the eight episodes, and now, behind the scenes, months and months and months later, they're figuring out, or maybe have figured out at this point, what to do with what they already filmed. According to Redanian Intelligence, who cover Netflix Witcher news and leaks, they have a flawless track record, and I'm hoping they find success with another series because they do a great job, but according to them, the footage may either end up being used in Season 4 as flashbacks, or Netflix may try to turn what they filmed into some sort of standalone sequel, like that upcoming Witcher anime that's apparently dropping later this year. And don't worry, there's news about that one, too. Before we move on, though, I do need to take a quick second to thank today's sponsor, Factor, who at this point are just a channel staple, as they're the only meal delivery service you'll ever need, and they're what I use almost every single week. I've been personally ordering Factor of my own accord for the past six months at this point, no exaggeration, because doing so has solved every food problem I've ever had. Factor meals are fresh and never frozen, but by far what's most important to me is that every meal I've had has somehow been healthy, convenient, and really, really good, which I had thought was an impossible combination pre-factor. I just don't have time to cook every day, or most days really, and most convenient foods are either unhealthy, extremely expensive, or just mind-numbingly boring, but Factor is none of those things, and it's truly changed my health for the better this past half year, as I'm eating what I should be every single day without burning hours I don't have cooking and cleaning. Factor delivers the meals to your front door each week, and when hungry, just pop them in the microwave for two minutes, or what I do is throw them in the oven for eight, and you're good to go. To get started, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code NEON50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Plus, and this is new, 20% off your next box as well. That said, just know you won't be locked in or committed for anything more past that first one, so I'm just personally recommending give that heavily discounted first box a try and you won't be disappointed. Now dig in. Okay, so I mentioned that upcoming Witcher anime, Sirens of the Deep, because there's also news related to both Sirens and the children's Witcher show Netflix announced. Yes, a Witcher show for the little ones, because we all know the Witcher is huge with and practically made for the under 10 crowd. I mean, my younger cousins absolutely love playing with their Horse and Junior action figures and their Philippa Eilhart dolls. I believe they have the variant with her eyes gouged out, but anyway, just for a little quick background on Sirens of the Deep, it's a full-length movie coming out later this year made by the same studio who did Nightmare of the Wolf, that Vesemir prequel from I think three years back that some really, really loved. I just thought it was okay for what it was. I never reviewed it because this channel didn't exist when it came out. But anyway, Sirens of the Deep isn't a sequel to Nightmare. Instead, it's adapting one of the short stories that season one skipped over, A Little Sacrifice, which, no spoilers, but A Little Sacrifice is a really laid back and pretty sad story about a girl, Essie Davin, or Poppet, who falls in love with Geralt, which he struggles with because of his feelings for Yennefer. And there's also a mermaid-related B-plot that's really just a background thing with thematic ties to the main story, but you can see from the trailer that Netflix have taken the references to an underwater war and have expanded it into something a lot bigger, which, I mean, whatever, at this point, I'm positive this movie is just going to gut the subtlety of the original, but I'm not going to judge the whole thing before it's out, mostly because production-wise, there's a lot of different people involved compared to the main show, plus Nightmare of the Wolf was 6 out of 10 okay. I mean, compared to Season 2 or Blood Origin, it was basically Return of the King, Okay, actually, I wouldn't go near that far, but speaking of Return of the King, the Doug Cockle is voicing Geralt in this movie, which 
Any chance to hear him again as Geralt is a blessing, plus Joey Beatty is there as Dandelion, he's great, and Anya is back as Yennefer, she's a perfectly good actress even if Yennefer is the worst written character in the show. In my opinion, a lot of people take how poorly Yen is written in the show and then pin it on the actress, but whatever, that's beside the point, because just a few days ago it was reported that Sirens of the Deep marks the end of Netflix Witcher, even if it's not going to be the last thing to release. Again, according to Redanian Intelligence, the main show is not only getting cut short, but Sirens of the Deep is the final Netflix Witcher spinoff. Everything else that was planned or announced, including that children's show that they started developing in 2021, three whole years ago, is dead in the water. And after Sirens of the Deep and those last two main show seasons that they're filming back to back, Netflix is apparently done with The Witcher. So for all five of you that were excited for Philippa and Ferb, or Series Fairly Odd Parents, or Zoltan 101, or whatever that kids show was gonna be, well, I'm sorry to disappoint, but it isn't happening. And that, honestly, has me excited. Not because I don't like what Netflix has done with The Witcher, I mean, I don't, but that's not why. I'm excited because now the clock can start ticking for someone else to give it a try, and whoever that ends up being will have the step-by-step -step instructions on what not to do. Granted, there is no guarantee the next attempt will be any good either, and it'll probably be the better part of a decade before any studio even wants to try and adapt the books again, but as long as CDPR's next games are good and The Witcher stays super relevant, I think it's only a matter of time before someone else gives it a try. Also, just a personal thing, I'm really looking forward in a couple of years to doing a huge post-mortem on this whole Netflix Witcher debacle and how slash why it all went down the way it did. Not that they'd be excited to chat with me after my reviews of their show, but I'd love to ask the showrunner not in an aggressive gotcha sort of way because I'm not that type of channel, but just as a Witcher fan, I'd love to hear the answers firsthand as to why certain decisions were made. I mean, I feel like in our hearts we all know the answer, but I'd love to hear some sort of explanation out loud because there hasn't been a single Netflix Witcher interview that wasn't a total puff piece, at least from what I've seen. Anyway, that's all for me today. If you enjoyed, consider leaving a like as that really helps my content get out there, and feel free to subscribe if you like what I'm doing here. As of recording, we just hit 150k yesterday, which is pretty cool. Thanks to my channel's patrons, as always, for your support. Follow me on Twitter if you want to, and that's all. See ya. But no, uh, maybe I gave them some ideas, but they never listened to me. <laughs> they never listened to me.